All right, welcome back guys. So today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be going over um, web application security testing. More specifically, uh, we're going to be using um, the SAP tool in Kali Linux, as well as a intentionally vulnerable app called WebGoat. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So what you want to do here is open up your Kali machine um, this is the one I set up in the previous tutorial. Uh, and once you have it booted up, uh, you want to go to your web browser and look up OWASP WebGoat. And it should be the first link here. You want to click on the standalone jars. It should take you to their GitHub page and just download the latest version. For me, that's 2023.8. And it should be down here, which is the webgoat.jar file. All right, well, my virtual machine just crashed on me, but we're back. Um, so now, after you have WebGoat installed, all we have to do is go to the Downloads folder. Right there. And if you do LS, you should see WebGoat right there. Um, and next, all we want to do is do java-jar, and then the WebGoat application, or the jar file. It might take a second to boot up here, but once it does, it, at the very bottom, it will give you like a little IP address to go to. And uh, yeah, all you're going to do is just uh, click on that. So yeah, I will be back once it's done. All right, cool. So it just finished here. And uh, yeah, right here, as you can see, it's just saying, please go to the local address right there. So just control click it. It should automatically open up in your browser here. Uh, my cat is just being a little slow. All right, cool. So once you have WebGoat opened up, all you want to do is copy this URL right there. And uh, next, what we're going to do is go into uh, OWASP SAP here. So if you just type SAP, you should see it right there. And whenever you're booting this up for the first time, it might take a bit just because that's how the application is. All right. So once you have SAP booted up, you should see this right here. Um, you can select whichever one you want. I'm just going to say no for now. Um, and also make sure your Zap application is fully updated on everything here. Uh, mine is, so I'm just going to leave it for now. And next, all we want to do is click on the automated scan option. Um, now, I will say this, be very careful what exactly you're scanning. You want to make sure it's not like a real site just because you can get into a lot of trouble for this. Um, but yeah, and you want to make sure you have the traditional spider selected as well as the Ajax spider um, and just hit attack. And it might take a bit here, um, depending on like, I guess it really just depends on the site. Usually like live sites will take a lot longer because you know, they have a lot baked into it. But because this is like something we're hosting locally, it's probably going to be pretty quick here. Um, and as you can see, like alerts are already generating here. Um, but yeah, once this finishes, I will get back here. All right, so the scan just finished and it looks like it came back with quite a few results here. Um, I do see that like it didn't quite pick up everything, um, like all the vulnerabilities, but it did pick up a few things. So let's kind of go through it real quick. Um, the red would be like for high severity alerts for vulnerabilities, orange for medium severity, yellow for low severity, and then the blue is just informational alerts, right? Um, yeah, let's just start off here. So at first glance, we do see that there is an absence of anti-CSRF tokens, which is, you know, a problem. Um, you probably don't want this on most sites as well as like a missing anti-click jacking header. Um, so these are just a few things that it picked up here. Um, but one thing that I didn't notice that it didn't quite pick up was uh, like cross-site scripting. Uh, let me actually demonstrate that here real quick. So if we go back to the web application here for WebCode, we want to click on register yourself as a new user. Um, please don't enter your re real credentials. Um, make sure it's just fake credentials. I'll say testing, and then my password one, two, three, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And agree and sign up. Already exists. G testing with extra G. All right, cool. Let's hit not now. And here in web code, I, I kind of like this because it's very similar to like if you're doing a CTF or something. Um, so if we go to injections, we do see cross-site scripting here. Go ahead and click on that. And here it kind of explains what cross-site scripting is, how it works, all that, right? So if we quickly go to page seven, I just want to demonstrate this real quick. Let's go ahead and delete this right here. Now, how cross-site scripting works is, say for example, you are on like a form or something and there's a comment section. If the website you are on is vulnerable to like a cross-site script attack, a attacker can possibly embed like a malicious script within the comment section. And if say someone like clicks on it or something, that can, now depending on what the script is, it can really, the results can vary, I would say. Uh, for example, if the attacker put in a script that basically hijacks the session of the user or victim that clicks on it, they can do that. It's a very possible thing. Um, to give you a quick example, right? We are going to enter a script ourselves, right? This is a script here. And let me just go to the very beginning. It's script alert and then hello world right here, and then closing the script off, right? If we just click enter on this, boom, that is our cross-site script attack, just for demonstrative purposes. But uh, in the real world, this script could possibly be anything, and it can vary from person to person, right? Or attacker to attacker. Um, but yeah, that is that and if we actually go back to zap here um it's always good to like really just analyze each one of these and just go through them one by one because uh, it really breaks down like how it works and all that like what each vulnerability is how you can possibly exploit it um but yeah this was just a quick tutorial demonstrating how you can do this um it's great to use zap uh, along with um, Burp Suite in conjunction with it, um, just because you're probably going to see the best results that way, especially if you are doing this in like a real world, world scenario where like your company, they told you to like, you know, see what vulnerabilities are on their web applications and like really see if you can exploit them. This would be more, a little more specific to red teaming, but yeah. Um, other than that, that is it. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please do leave them down in the comment and I will catch you all in the next one.